God says in 2 Corinthians chapter number nine, or chapter number 12, verse number nine, my grace is sufficient for you and my power is made perfect in weakness. And so in just trying to uh, generate a little bit of dialogue tonight, what over the last three weeks is something that you have seen or a way that you have seen God moving in the midst of the craziness of our world right now? What, what, what is an area, what is a way that you have seen God moving? You have seen God's power uh, being displayed uh, over the last couple of weeks. Well, I think God worked in my life uh, close to him and his word to trust him, to put trust in him, walk with him. He wants to just you know, rely on him his many voices out there. There's confusion. And the enemy's a lie and deceiver. And we have the victory. And we can be restored to the church. We don't know when. God's timing. God protection. We pray for God's protection. God will be done. And the enemy's a lie. It come out to steal and destroy and kill. So we have life with Christ. We have the word. We have the body of Christ. And God is using, using uh, technology today. He's like a priest to the nations. And that's why we're doing today, priest to the nations that never before. But it has to stop the church. We have to repent, get back to God, because the world will do that. It's not, I'm good, I'm a good person, I don't need it. So this is what I'm saying, or what I'm saying here tonight, that the love of God, and people need Jesus, not more politics, more money, but people have to go back to work. That's good. Anybody else? How have you seen God moving in the midst of everything that's going on right now? Because I really believe God is moving. I really believe that uh, God's not silent right now. Mm -hmm. I, I truly believe that. So what have you seen? Maybe it's personal within you, know, you maybe within your family unit, or maybe it's something that you've seen outside of that. So there's no wrong answer if you're sharing with the, the goodness of God right now. We've seen a lot in our um, community in Mannheim coming together and uh, just helping each other. We have a local pizza place here that has been putting out, um, looking for donations to donate to the hospital. And this, this week, um, today, they donated to the food workers at the schools that are preparing all the lunches for the kids to pick up. And um, just how the community is coming together and making this happen and blessing, blessing the people, but blessing the, the business that's doing it too. Yeah. To keep them going. It's just Good. been really neat to see everybody work together. That is neat. That is neat. Yeah. And I know uh, Donna Fry had a uh, comment a couple of, I don't remember which night it was Donna. So I apologize, but she was frustrated because there were some people not being so nice to one another. And right. uh, that was that was frustrating for you, I remember. And, and you certainly can share if you want to. I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but I remember you saying at that one point that that was frustrating and made you sad. So it's kind of nice to hear Lisa be able to share a, a story on the other side then about people right. rallying together. Right. Because we do need more unity. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and here, when, when God says this uh, to, to uh, Paul, he says, my grace is sufficient for you. And so, not, and, and great examples. I've certainly, you know, Vinny and, and Lisa, both great examples. But God's grace is sufficient for each one of us. Not just for our communities, not just for, and again, all of those are very important. But don't forget, he says, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. I, hey, I've, I'll be honest with you. I've had some weak moments uh, where I've gotten my focus off of the Lord and my focus has been on a news report or my focus has been on how in the world do we respond to that? Uh, I, I'm just being very transparent with you, being very raw with you, but um, I, I've had those moments of weakness and uh, whether it's a, a nudge of the Lord or a, a kind word from someone else saying, hey, maybe you ought to, you know, is your focus on the right thing? Is your focus in the right place? And, uh, you know, God just reminds me, hey, I got this. 
I got this. And that was for me in that moment. You know, that, that was personal in that moment. So, you know, in the midst of all the craziness, in the midst of what God, the positive that God is doing in the community or uh, through a group of people or, or through the church, you know, don't forget that his grace is made perfect in your weakness, in your moments of, of fill in the blank, whatever that might be. Right. But it's not just COVID either. It's, it's, I mean, it's everything that's going on in the world. I mean, the Southern states that have had the, the severe tornadoes and the people that have lost everything and, and the flooding and there's just so much going on. It's, yeah, our focus sometimes uh, goes straight to the virus, but you make a great point. There's so much more than that that's even going on right now. Right. And uh, we have to be mindful to those that are affected by those things as well, you know? So that's a, it's a good reminder. Also, you know, like you do listen to the news and everything, but I'm impressed with the way some of the, um, when they present the news or a particular situation, the name of Jesus is really mentioned very many times. Uh, Sunday afternoon we saw um, Franklin Graham and uh, he, he was there um, at Central, Central, Park. Central Park near the Samaritan's Purse Hospital and everything. Okay. And unabashedly, he just, without preaching, he, in his in his own unique way, he just gave the gospel message, mm-hmm. and he didn't apologize for anything. Yes. And it wasn't just God is there; but it was Jesus. He mentioned Jesus, and even the president, the president too. He he said, "What did he say the other day?" He said, um, "God help me make the right decision." Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, we, we hear a lot of those things. Even the different commentators they mention. God and the faith. There, there's a lot of uh, commentators when we do watch talks. They are very, very uh, uh, Christ-centered. They are. They they mention different things that um, that they believe in, and you never heard that before. I mean, you maybe suspected that they were Christians or whatever, but it's given them a boldness to say, "Well, I'm a Christian, you know, and this is what I believe," mm-hmm. and and they're not apologetic about it. They're not they're not in your face kind of but um and it's refreshing it's it's good to see that in despite of all this in spite of all this that the gospel message is going out even if somebody's not looking for it you know and, and um it it makes your heart glad that that people in the world are, are realizing that you know we're all in this together but but that god has us all and yeah. he's he's in control and that message comes comes out far more than all the negative things you hear i, I um, really appreciate that they are mentioning jesus very often yeah and even those uh folks that maybe you know either aren't christians or, or we still don't know but you hear words like pray for each other or things like that a lot more often too and hey i'll t- i say t- we'll take anything that we can get if if people want to point other people to prayer that's awesome uh, right. cuz god shows up in prayer we know that mm-hmm. uh, we we know that f- uh, f- all all full well so uh, sandy put in the chat box things that um, I'm sorry, in some of my devotions, it was about specific things that could be related to coronavirus and everything that's going on. I know that was not, I know that was not an accident, but I felt closer to the Lord because I felt he was comforting her, comforting me. So that's what Sandy shared. So that's awesome, Sandy. Thank you for putting that in the, in the box to share for us as well. Uh, Philippians chapter number four, um, Paul continues to write to that church. And again, these are scripture verses that you may be very familiar with, but I just wanted to share them with you. Our cat can't decide if she wants to be in or out of the room that we're in. So she keeps scratching the door open and she never closes it though. She just like, she doesn't. Um, anyway, 
Philippians 4.19. And uh, Paul writes this. He says, my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. My God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. That's, mm-hmm. That verse has always brought me great comfort uh, in a lot of different situations, uh, situations and a lot of different circumstances. But, you know, I think about that even in the midst of uh, the uncertainty. And, and Don, I love what you said, you know, it's more than just Corona. And it really is. And he doesn't say he'll meet all your needs in one area or in the biggest one of uh, the biggest area of need that you have. But he says he'll meet all your needs according to his glorious riches. You and I know that God's riches are more glorious than we can put into words or we could write down or even try to fathom in our brains. And so he's going to meet those needs according to his glorious riches. Just, man. Think about that. He'll meet your needs according to his glorious riches. Well, if you ever want a co-signer, he's the one that you want, you know, his glorious riches. And, but that's what, he's, that's what he's lavishing on us. That's what he's doing for us. And so, you know, be steadfast in your devotion to the Lord right now. And I don't want to, you know, beat the dead horse and, and be that guy that's all he's ever saying. But I think sometimes as believers, we need to be reminded because the enemy tries to come in. Mm -hmm. And he tries to come in and he tries to say, well, this is worse or, you know, this isn't going to get any better. Look, feel, see how lonely you are. And, you know, just reminds us of those things. And those are subtle things. We're not looking necessarily in that area for him to show up. And so we've got to be mindful and we need to be vigilant uh, that he is roaming around. Again, seeking who he may devour. And you and I have to get to that place where we're not allowing him to devour us. So remember, God does supply all your needs according to his glorious riches you know i think about uh, the israelites in the book of jeremiah i'm reading through some of the old testament right now just in my own devotion and uh in the book of joshua at the end of the book joshua of course passes away and right before he does he kind of gathers all the elders together and that's where we get that famous um choose you this day who you will serve. And as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And uh, when he asked them to choose, immediately they say, yes, we're going to serve God. And I don't know if you remember, and I'm paraphrasing, but basically he says, no, you're not. You're not going to serve God. I don't think you understand what you're saying. And they say, no, 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 we're going to serve God. We're going to serve God. And so they made some sacrifices and they did all that. Well, you turn the page and the next book in the Bible is the book of Judges. And it says that as soon as those leaders that serve with Joshua, Joshua died, those leaders continued to lead the people in the correct way. As soon as his leaders died, Israel immediately went back and started serving false gods. And then, and then God in the scripture begins to tell us how these judges are raised up and, and how, what that process looks like. But you know, it's so easy. And listen, we can be critical of the Israelites and you saw God do this and how could you be so crazy? Listen, we're just as crazy sometimes. And so I just want to encourage you, make sure you're steadfast. Make sure you are a powerful, anointed believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't ever forget that. Uh, you, you're not that way because of how you feel. You're that way because of what God says in his word. And so make sure that you are in that word. Make sure that you're praying and you're not distracted by those other things so that you remember who you are. Remember who you are. And I just want you to be encouraged with that tonight. Listen, we're getting to the second half of the week and sometimes we're weary in our bodies by this point. And when is the, when is the week going to end so we can have some relaxing time? But listen, Stay steadfast in devotion to the Lord. Remember the later in the Israelite story, they go into captivity in Babylon and God speaks through Jeremiah and says, I know the plans that I have for you. God still remembers the plans that he has for each one of us. He knows the plans that he has for the church. He knows the plans that he has for for everything and he hasn't forgotten them. We just have to stay steadfast. We just have to stay steadfast. Stay the course.
no matter what it looks like, whether the church doors open May 1st or whether the church doors open August 1st. Listen, we can't sit here and tell when that's going to be, but we got to keep that devotion to the Lord. We have to keep doing what we're doing and then share that good news. Please don't forget that piece of it. Uh, you know, Donna's alluded to it and Lisa's alluded to it. And we all know it's out there. People around us are fearful. I ran to the store the other day to pick something up for my wife. I got a tickle in my throat. I coughed in the grocery aisle. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> out of store. I thought they were going to throw me out of the store. They, they, everybody's looking at me. And I think it was, I had one of the kids with me. They're like, dad, you can't do that. I'm like, well, I didn't try. You know, it's not like I was like, hey, let's see what happens when I do this. You know, it was like a real legit, just needed some water, didn't have any, had to cough. But the looks and the glares, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. People are fearful. People are fearful. And so what a great opportunity that you and I have. I, by the way, I don't recommend coughing in the grocery store at this point in time. Not, not a good thing. To do. But People are fearful. They need some good news. They need the gospel. They need to know there's hope out there. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds like a no-brainer, but people really don't know that. They really don't know a source of hope right now. They really don't know. Uh, and not only are they hopeless, but they're kind of mean too. And uh, Crystal and I went to the store a couple weeks ago, and we paused, and I was standing by the sugar. And there was a lady that came up, and she said, I need one of those. <laughs> Sorry, you know, because they're focused, you know, they they just, they have their eyes on what they want to have their eyes on or what they feel like they need to have their eyes on, but the eyes need to be on Jesus. And you and I are the ones that help direct the, redirect those eyes. We help redirect um, where they put the focus on. And so please take advantage of those opportunities. Take advantage when the Lord brings that to your, your forefront, when he, when he brings that to your attention, make sure that you're taking advantage of those opportunities. Um, thanking people. I can't tell you how long, how, how far a thank you goes right now. Oh, yeah. Because people are, you know, unfortunately, Donna, you're right. They're just mean right now because their, yeah. their focus isn't correct. So a thank you. We went out today and I thanked the person for what they had done. And they just, they, they look at you funny. But it's just, a, it's, just a, it's just an opportunity. It's just an avenue. Who knows what the Lord can use mm -hmm. through simple little things. So mm -hmm. let me stop talking and give you opportunity to share, give you opportunity. And then in uh, just a couple of minutes when we close, we did hear back from Cecile. So I want to just share that with you. But we'll do that at the very end. So what else do you want to share? What's on your heart? What is the Lord speaking to you as we, as we talk about this tonight? You know, Pastor, I was thinking like when you were talking, and all of us probably are guilty of that, but say from the world's perspective, all the things that we trusted in, you know, the paycheck was going to come, um, you know, you, you had plans to see sports or, or you're going to go out to eat or, or something like that. All the things that we trusted it in, they're no longer there. So it's almost like, you really like what do you believe what what's what do you trust what do you believe in and it's it's hard because when everything else gets stripped away right you have to find your core and if and i, I you know i ask myself this too if the core is in jesus what do we have what where do we place our hope because all the things we placed our hope in are not there right now Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, like, when we get back to, quote, normal, the things that we've learned, the lessons that we've learned in these past few weeks, we have to take them with us and, and share them and teach people, reach people with that, because we're not going to be the same people coming out on the other side than we, than we are now. So That's good. Thank you. I'll Anybody say else? that with work, like at work, we're under a lot of um, stress with the, uh, if you've heard about the Paycheck Protection Program, um, well, we we decided to, we were going to be a funder of that, and we're a small organization, so we processed 140 applications in a matter of 
14 days. Wow. And so it's been, and we're still working through them, but it's been like 12 plus hour days. And I could sense that, um, like I, I started to resent certain people because I felt like I was putting more in and God really opened my eyes that I've got a serious, apparently pride is an issue with me, <laughs> but he was really speaking to me with regards to that, especially this week where I had to kind of turn my focus, whether or not, cause I don't know everybody's situation. I don't know how much work everybody's putting in really. Um, so it was like turning it around and just thanking people and, and also, um, putting, putting them on the, in the forefront, like, you know, uh, like putting the appreciation out there, um, to the whole staff and mm -hmm. just saying, um, kudos to these people for doing that instead of asking for the kudos for myself, mm -hmm. um, I appreciate them, but it was like, turn it around right now because you're not doing this alone. Um, so it was kind of a lot of that because I think the stress of it was starting to really, um, yeah, it was not starting to, it was working on, um, it, it's just, it's, it was, it's bad. <laughs> so God really like woke me up this week, especially saying, you know, you gotta, you really need to refocus it. And uh, what is your purpose here? And what are you doing here? And um and also you're not doing it alone so it's kind of changing my attitude doesn't mean i'm still not stressed but my attitude has changed about it <laughs> wow. and also taking the time to actually stop and get on this zoom call because that was the other thing is like you know you got to allow yourself the time that you need to um to feed yourself and it's mm -hmm. you know and that was kind of i was neglecting that as well and so yeah much needed time right now too <laughs> well good for you for taking that time good for you for taking that time I was guilty of that too um just not taking any time to rest not taking any time that was downtime uh, I told my wife I, at one point I felt like I had earbuds growing out of my ears because I was attending so many zoom calls and on so many online things and uh, we need that time to decompress. We need that time to <clears throat> clear our mind. So we're so thankful that you're able to join us tonight and be here. And uh, hopefully the Lord was just able to deposit some more good stuff yeah. into you and <laughs> and uh, he'll take and continue to fill you up and allow you to rest in him. So that's good. That's good. Well, I, let, um, sorry, go ahead. If I may say, you know, living alone, and I realize I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. um, I know Jesus is with me, but I don't have anybody that walks through my door. Um, I don't have anybody that I can talk to. Um, so sometimes I do reach a point where I do, I get down. And yesterday was one of those days where it didn't matter what I did. Um, and I've been turning to the Bible a lot. I've been spending a lot of time in the word. Um, I, I feel like I've learned so much lately and I am so grateful for that. Um, but yesterday I, I just, I couldn't pull myself out of it. And I was up till two thirty this morning. <laughs> wow. And um, Missy has me into this diamond painting, so I thought I'll diamond paint, and I just chose some of the old Christian songs, and so I had actually listened to the Zoom meeting from Tuesday about uh, perseverance and how you had mentioned um, that the Lord wants us to fix our eyes upon him. So I listened to, um, and actually sang along with it at 2.30 in the morning, um, in my not so great voice, um, turn your eyes upon Jesus. And then I found um, the hymn, um, 
a friend in Jesus. Mm. And I sang that as well. So I just, even though I was up at two 30 in the morning and you know what? I felt so much better after I, mean, I always pray, but I felt so much better singing to him that I could actually go to sleep. And when I woke up this morning, um, the song Hallelujah was what I woke up to. Wow. Well, thank you for being so honest and real with us. And I think we can all understand what you're saying because I think there are times where all of us have been there and are there and just appreciate that but that just I don't know when you were talking Crystal mentioned this and I was thinking it as well it comes back to that first verse of scripture my grace is sufficient right my grace is sufficient and I'll supply all your needs you know and God knew what you needed in that moment God knew that right. it was just a whole big dish of him uh, right. <laughs> he needed, and he drew you to himself through some old songs through that zoom replay that you caught on youtube and yeah he knew it and he did it and you yeah. responded to it i think there's something to be said for that as well because we can we can push that those nudgings away you know well yeah. i want to sing some hymn now nah, i'm not going to do that you know yeah. so good for you for re responding to that tug in your heart yeah so God's so faithful, so faithful. He's so faithful. So let me give you a quick update from Cecile here, everyone, if that's all right. And then we're going to go ahead and we'll close in prayer. And if you want to hang out for a couple minutes, we can. And if you're not able to, that's fine too. But this is from Cecile. Her son's name, by the way, is Stephen. It says, Stephen is healing slowly, we hope. They actually don't know won't know, excuse me, they actually won't know for several weeks whether or not the hard tissue has survived. Additionally, they use stainless steel plates and screws, and Stephen is allergic to nickel. Nickel is part of stainless steel. Oh. The surgeon didn't notice the allergy in his records prior to surgery. He's not sure if it will cause any problems. For now, he is in quite a bit of pain and is getting around in a walker. He cannot go to PT because of the virus, but hopefully that will change soon. As always, we've placed him, at the, we've placed him in the Lord's able hands, the safest place for him to be. Thank you for praying. And then she wrote, uh, he is at home. I stayed with him for the first week. He has someone coming in now to help him with meals and some light housework. I go back and visit on weekends. So that's the update that we have from her on her son. So whoever asked that, thank you for asking. And that's certainly the update. And we need to just keep him in prayer. So. Okay. Well, it's eight o'clock. I'm going to close our time together in a word of prayer. And then if you need to go, you certainly feel free to go. And if you hang out for a couple minutes, that's okay too. Let's, let's close our time together uh, tonight in a word of prayer.